Is your phone also full of random notes to yourself, such as a story about a ventriloquist dummy or a link for a story named Ninth Spanish Legion? Have you sat in front of a blank page for hours on end, paralyzed, not knowing what to do? Congrats, you might be a writer. Hi, my name is Marco and welcome to the Storyline Sessions podcast. This topic is really personal to me and that's why I decided to, to dedicate the first solo episode to it. Writing and telling stories has been something I've done in various forms practically since preschool. I lost and found my way back to writing a couple of times and my professional life revolves around writing for many years now. Recently I've gotten back to writing fiction and it's been a bumpy ride. Sometimes I'll write for a few weeks in a row without hesitation but sometimes it just stops for a while. It feels like I'm in a Terry Pratchett novel where there are some small beings controlling my laptop and on some days they don't like cooperating and so no work gets done. Bukowski said, writing isn't work at all. And when people tell me how painful it is to write, I don't understand it. Because it's just like rolling down the mountain you know. It's freeing. It's enjoyable. It's a gift and you get paid for what you want to do. He repeats that sentiment in his poem, so you want to be a writer. And I recommend a great reading of it by Tom Bedlam, I'll put the link in the description. And on the other hand, there's this quote by Kurt Vonnegut from Prologue to Slapstick. He writes, My agent, Max Wilkinson, wrote to me after I complained, again, about what a disagreeable profession I had. This was it. Dear Kurt, I never knew a blacksmith who was in love with his anvil. I think that in some way both are true, but Bukowski's is more romantic, uh, a lot of writers dream of just pulling thoughts from their heads just like in a Harry Potter novel and putting them on a page effortlessly, but unfortunately for a lot of us those moments are far in between. It's something I've discussed with Jason Furman in the first episode of Storyline Sessions, and I imagine it will come up again in future episodes, is the thing that Stephen Pressfield famously defined in his The War of Art book as resistance. It is a negative force in the world that keeps you from fulfilling your dreams. It is the enemy of achievement. That, and not laziness, is what keeps most of us away from turning those seeds of ideas in our notes and in our heads into half-decent stories. Procrastination and self-doubt complement each other quite nicely. It's actually a catch-22. We often procrastinate because we don't believe our work is good enough, and we doubt ourselves and our work because we don't finish enough. And opposite of resistance is what drives us. Call it amuse, as Pressfield does, call it passion or love for the craft, it's something that keeps us uh, and our minds coming back to the stories that we want to tell, no matter how scary the process might seem at the moment. What I find comforting, even when I fall off, is that the passion and everything that comes with it, it's natural and never stopping. It feels like I'm constantly working on a story, in my head at least. I'm always writing and everything is part of the process. The way that the spider glides down the web from a lamp, or that small cloud cruising above a lake while relaxing on the beach. I think that goes hand in hand with a quote from Jorge Luis Borges. He said, A writer's work is the product of laziness, you see. A writer's work essentially consists of taking his mind off things, of thinking about something else, of daydreaming, of not being in a hurry to go to sleep but to imagine something. And then comes the actual writing. And that's his trade. That is, I don't think the two things are incompatible. Still, it's a problem when the actual writing doesn't come. We need to find things that work for us so we can keep those laptop beings I mentioned in check. So how do I do it? Well, here are three things that usually do the trick for me and I hope you find them useful as well. The first one is setting short-term goals and blocking actual time to write. I like James Clear's thoughts that motivation is often the result of action, not the cause of it. And in the past year, I've discovered the Writing Hour by London Writer Salon. I'll put a link to it in the description. And what it is, it's basically a, a virtual hour-long writing sprint uh, that's done in four time zones each morning and it's free for all to attend. Uh, they hold four morning sessions across four time zones. I usually join in the evening because that fits my schedule the most. And just being a part of that great community has helped me keep pace and allocate strict time to my writing that mostly eluded me before. I also have a calendar reminder that each day goes off and that also makes it feel like something that's not negotiable for me and like I treat it like a work commitment. Recently I have to admit that I fell off a bit but I'm eager to get back there and rejoin the great community that they've built. The thing they also suggest basically in every session is doing Julia Cameron's morning pages. Three pages of freehand stream of consciousness writing. And even though her ritual, so to say, is doing them in the morning, you can of course do them anytime that you please, and they really do work. 
And that also ties in well with the last episode I've done where we discussed just writing out your thoughts. And there's a reason a lot of people praise journaling in all of its form and especially freehand writing. Another one that's big for me is starting with the editing. When you finally sit down, another big obstacle appears. The first sentence is never good enough, so that's why not confronting a black page at the start works for me. I usually go over something I've done before and do some light editing to get into the right mindset, to get in the flow. And when I rearrange some words and get some decent lines in, it gets easier just to keep on writing from there and keep your work going. This also applies to non-fiction, work writing, heck even emails. And just be careful that this doesn't turn into a form of procrastination as well. I've done a fair share of my sessions where I've just edited stories that were already finished. And a third thing that's really worked for me is writing out stuff uh, in advance when I'm in the zone or in the flow. And no matter if you're a plotter or a pantser, this can help you give your future self a boost and a head start. You don't need really to plan that far ahead. For me, it's just enough to know what I'm doing first when I get into the session and I usually figure it out from there and the start gets easier. I usually don't get writer's block when it comes to ideas. I just get a block for putting them down on paper. But if you do come to it, you may find writing prompts useful. Maybe not in a common sense, here's a sentence, use it as a title or theme, but something that piques your interest and helps you get in the mood. One of the most fun ways I've done that and jump-started the creative brain, so to say, is to mix and match genres and styles. It's something that Neil Gaiman talks to a greater extent in his masterclass, and I'll talk about that in one of the future episodes, but basically how it works, you take something that usually wouldn't be put together and you try to make something out of it. For example, you try to write a fable in a noir style, or you set out to write a western with romance in it and also for some reason vampires. And on the back of that, uh, what if scenarios are also a good exercise? You can ask yourself questions, what if gravity suddenly stopped working? And you can go a step further by connecting them with another interesting situation, such as workers on a shift in a fast food restaurant and then the gravity disappears, what do they do? And I think this can be used not only to get a good idea, but also to get the bad ones out. A while back I learned about a creative tool that I've used in my advertising work. You basically write out 10 bad ideas on purpose and then you examine them and use them as a starting point to get to the good ones. And another reason why I decided to talk about procrastination blocks and overcoming self-doubt is because this week is the start of the Alphabet Superset project. It's a creative project created by Campbell Walker, aka Struthless. If you haven't heard of him, he's an illustrator, writer, YouTuber, among other things, and his book Your Head is a Houseboat and his channel are one of the main reasons that I managed to stop thinking and talking about creating my platform and actually doing it. I hope I'll manage to get Shrutless on Storyline Sessions at some point, but enough fun boing, uh, let's get back to the Alphabet Superset project. As it's described on their website, it's a deceptively simple blueprint designed to set your creativity on fire. In practice, that means making something every week for 26 weeks, around 26 topics of your choice, each starting with a different letter of the alphabet, hence the name. It's A to Z, but while the topics change weekly, everything else stays the same. The theme, your medium, style, output size, and the way you present your work to the world. This also, again, ties into the great conversation we had last week with Jason about his Word 1000 Words, where he wrote a story each week for two years in a row. And I see this also as an opportunity to practice consistency and push myself even further. As I am overestimating my time and productivity as one does, I won't just count this podcast as my entry to the project. I'll also create posts about things that inspire me for the storyline sessions and put them on Instagram. So feel free to follow me there. And if you want to join the project yourself, I'll leave the details in the description. Anyway, that's all I have for you this week. If you made it to the end, thank you for tuning in and I hope you find it useful. You can follow Storyline Sessions podcast on Instagram and find every piece of media that we mention in each episode in the description. If you're interested in topics of creating writing and telling stories in any kind of media, keep following the Storyline Sessions, as there is another great conversation coming your way next week. This podcast is recorded using Riverside FM. It's a tool that I highly recommend, and if you'd like to try it out for yourself, use the link in the description that helps me with the commission without any additional cost to you. My name is Marko Bogdanovic, and I'll see you in the next episode. Keep creating stories.